Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Day 112. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I come to you live at 5.19 in the a.m. on the 18th of October. What a joy and blessing it is in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we come to proclaim Psalm 112, the righteous shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles. Let's go into the eighth pack together as we bless the name of the Lord. I am Malcolm David, the captain in this voyage. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration, our Father. There is none who can compare to you, O God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. Let's just begin by worshiping the King and honoring Him, setting our hearts ready. Hallelujah. To soak in the Word and just to be in the presence of God. For the righteous shall never be moved. They shall never be moved in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Come on, let's honor the Lord. Father, we thank you. We honor you, Lord. Be lifted, O oh God. Be lifted, O oh God. Be lifted. Be lifted. Thank you for day one. Thank you for day two. Thank you for day three. Thank you, Lord, for helping us into day four. Thank you, Lord, into day five. Thank you, Lord, day six and seven. Thank you, Lord, for the book one of Psalms, chapter one to verse 41. Chapter 41. Hallelujah. Thank you for book two, Lord. From chapter 42 to chapter 72. Hey. Thank you, Lord, for book three. From chapter 73 to chapter 89. Thank you, Abba Father. For, for book 4 of Psalms and the other chapters, the Gospels, the apostolic letters from Paul that we've read, Romans, John, Mark, Luke, Matthew. Father, thank you for book 4. From Psalms chapter 90 to Psalms chapter 106 hey! Aha. thank you Jesus and now Lord we are into book 5 of the book of Psalms from chapter 106 we will go all the way to chapter 150 so we are my Lord you are wonderful we read the word of God from the place of rest the place of Yeshua the place of the Lord of the Sabbath we are not anxious We are not pressed down. We are not overrun by the enemy. Hey! <laughs> From the rising of the sun till the setting of the same your name is to be honored 
Father, reveal to us deep truths of the Spirit, deep, 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 deep revelations. Show us deep revelations as we enter into this time to read and meditate on your word. Father, we pray, oh, the righteous shall not be moved. Hey, I will pray in the spirit, but I will also pray with understanding. I will sing in the spirit, but I'll also sing with understanding. We give you the praise, Abba Father. We give you the honor. There is none who can compare to you, Lord. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. From whom his whole family in heaven and earth derives his name. And I pray that the glorious, that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his, through his spirit in your inner being. Through his spirit, through that connectivity of your spirit to his spirit. May the Lord strengthen you with power. So as, because of that power, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Yay! Thank you, Jesus, for helping us, helping us, helping us in this journey, helping us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for revealing truths. Thank you, Lord, for revealing this truth about you as the Lord of the Sabbath. Oh, Jesus. That you did not break any Sabbath, when you healed on the Sabbath. Lord, you are the Lord of the Sabbath. We come to enter into rest in all things in you. All things, all things, Lord. We enter into rest in you, O God. In all things, O God. Lord, when the herdsmen are looking up and there is no sign of a cloud, when the ground is hard and parched, Lord, you turn the deserts into pools of water. Father, you are the one who answers prayer. So we call to you, we call to you, we call to you, Lord. Yay! We call to you, Lord Jesus. We call to you, Lord Jesus. Isaiah 30 verse 23. He says, I will send, he will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground and the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broad meadows. Isaiah 30 verse 23. Hey, hallelujah. How awesome are you, Lord? You are awesome, your name is to be honored. From the rising, from the rising of the sun, till the setting, till the setting of the same your name is to be honored Adonai. we worship you lord breathe on your word today lord help us to hear you help us to meditate on your word help us to live full of your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I welcome you into this broadcast. It's uh, the day that we finally get to broadcast Psalm 112. We bless the name of the Lord for a uh, successful mission up north in the northwest of uh, Kenya in a place called Lerata. It was the second time we were going there. I will be able to give you a mission update on that. And we bless the name of the Lord. So we go straight into the word and we bless the name of the Lord because of helping us 
And this far, he is the one who is helping us. All the time helping us and we just glorify his name. Psalm 112. The righteous shall not be moved. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Who finds great delight in his commands. His children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is secure. He will have no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted high in honor. Psalm 11, 12, verse 10. The wicked man will see and be vexed. He will gnash his teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. Beloved, this psalm is about the eternal happiness of the righteous man. This is one of the most amazing psalms that we come across that is showing us the eternal happiness of the saints. This is God helping us to understand that the righteous will never be moved. That we come to glorify the name of the Lord and honor him and bless his name because he reigns supreme and he reigns forever and he's faithful in all his ways. The truly happy man or woman is he or she that fears the Lord. For he or she is given outward prosperity as far as it is good for him and all spiritual blessings which are true and eternal riches. Spiritual blessings have already been released to you. In the book of Ephesians, we see that the Lord has blessed us with all the blessings in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 1 and verse number 3. We bless the Lord again for one striking fact we carry is that the fixedness of the heart. The sovereign remedy is a sovereign remedy against all the disquieting news. Everything that is happening across the world is one of the greatest inheritances as Christians. For God has proved himself to be victor over Satan. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, is the sure way of establishing the heart. Hallelujah! I will repeat that. That looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, is the sure way of establishing the heart in God. What a joy and blessing it is, and indeed a delight as we continue. Proverbs chapter 3. This is one of those amazing proverbs that, you know, we can actually be able to... If somebody asked me, which proverb can you be able to read for us if you had the only one chance to read a proverb? I would not miss to read Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter... Oh my, there are so many good ones. I think the whole book of Proverbs should just be embedded in the hearts of the believers every time to prevent us from making foolish decisions. Because where there is no wisdom, there is foolishness. And where there is no vision, the people, process, the people perish. So it's important to know one of the great things that we need to pray to and to our God is for divine wisdom, even of our leaders. They, need, they should know what to do, you know. Like when you look at the, the drought and, and where we just came back from in Lerata. I mean, you come, you step out of the vehicle and you feel like you're in an oven and you're being baked slowly. Too much heat. And that's the same place that a couple of years ago, it had wildlife, it was bursting with life, it was green and everything. So we know that when we come to benefit from wisdom, we'll be able to get to know what should we do in difficult situations. God has already given us a way out. And when we come to him, he's giving us the wisdom freely. This is my son. Do not forget my teaching, 
but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor with God and with man. You will win favor and a good name in the sight of man, in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on all in on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth. The first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. It says verse 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father the son he delights in. Blessed, ah, listen to this, and this is you now. This is you. I'm talking about you. It says, blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. So this is the delightful uh, aspect of coming to this word because you are described and this is what you are subscribing to. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. So when you are in your prayer altar, pray. Tell the Lord, Father, I thank you for finding wisdom. I thank you for gaining understanding. In Jesus' name. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. Father, I thank you because she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Yes, Lord, we pray the proverb 3, verse 13 to verse 16 in Jesus' name. Verse 17 says, Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the deeps were divided and the clouds let down, drop, let drop the dew. My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep, your sleep will be sweet. Let me pause here and mention that if you have a challenge of sleep and the only medication that you are, take, you are giving yourself is either to, uh, you know, have some drugs or to have a drink that will make you sleep. Have you ever come across this verse? Because this verse will put you to sleep safely and you will not be afraid when you lie down. You actually don't need any medication to sleep. Sleep was put by God to give rest. And the ones that will not find rest are the wicked. The Bible says that the wicked have no rest. But now you need to rest. In fact, we need to serve God from a place of rest. We don't need to struggle and hyperventilate when we are serving God. No. Oh, we need to do... Oh, no, 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 no. Look at the clouds in the sky and see how they move. You don't even notice. But the clouds are always moving. The clouds are always moving. Always making different formations. The, the clouds in the sky, they are never stagnant. And when they come together, the waters above the heavens. It is not the clouds that bring the rain like they taught you. There is water above the heavens that God can release even without a single cloud if he desires to do that. So our prayer is that to come to the place where we have no fear. When we lie down, we'll not be afraid. When we lie down, your sleep will be sweet. It says, I have no fear of sudden disaster. 
or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Don't say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it to you tomorrow when you have it now with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives truthfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man but takes the upright into his confidence. Now listen to this. The Lord's curse is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers and gives grace to the humble, but gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. The righteous will never be moved. Ecclesiastes 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, may this word continue to become flesh as we read it, as we meditate on it, as we see it. Let it divide between the bone and the marrow, between the joints and the marrow, Lord. Hallelujah. In the, the spirit and the soul. Lord, let this word separate the solical nature from the spiritual nature and let cause the spirit man to dominate and to lead the man and the woman into a place where they can never be moved. Father, for this one that is struggling with reading the word of God, Father, this one that is lacking concentration, Lord, I pray, release your angels to guard their mind and their hearts. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Open my eyes, Lord. Do good to your servant and I will live. I will live according to your word. Open my eyes. Ah. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. In Jesus' name. We come on to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and we bless the name of the Lord in this uh, time that we are reading God's word together and we are continuing, he says. Again I looked and I saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed and they have no comforter. Power was on the power of the oppressors and they have no comforter. I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But better than both is he that has not yet been who has not yet seen the evil that is done under the sun. And I saw that all labor and all achievements spring from man's envy of his neighbor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. The fool folds his hands and ruins himself. Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. 
But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to take warning. The youth may have come from the prison to the kingship or he may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. Ecclesiastes 4.16 There was no end to all the people who were before him, but those who came later were not pleased with the successor. This too is meaningless and are chasing after the wind. Hmm. Ecclesiastes 4 We now come to commence the book. No, no, no actually we're going to Nahum chapter 3. And then we shall go to commence 1 Corinthians. So we come to Nahum chapter 3 and the last chapter of Nahum. is the war to Nineveh. The war to Nineveh. This is Nahum chapter 3. As I continue to remind you that the righteous will never be moved. Will never be moved in Jesus' name. So Nahum chapter 3 is the wars to Nineveh. You know, Nineveh, Nineveh will reap what they have sowed and that is what the wickedness they have done is that destruction and violence was what they were sowing and that is what they, indeed they were going to sow they were going to reap so let's hearken to the word of god nahum tree woe to the city of blood full of lies full of plunder never without victims the crack of whips the clatter of wheels the galloping of horses and jolting chariots charging calvary flashing swords and glittering spears many casualties piles of death bodies without number people stumbling over the corpses all because of the wanton lust of a harlot alluring the masked mistress of sorceries who enslaved nations by her prostitution and peoples by her witchcraft now before i go on further I want to just bring to your, under, uh, your understanding about this whole uh, dimension of sorcery and witchcraft and prostitution and all those things. Prostitution is a way when sorcery has reached fullness and witchcraft is the manipulation of souls. According to Derek Prince, he describes witchcraft as domination, intimidation, manipulation. So anytime you see anything that looks like domination, intimidation, manipulation, you know that witchcraft is at work. And you see that this story is telling us here, this wonderful world is giving us the understanding that the warlord, wanton, last of a harlot is not somebody, it's a principality. The mistress of sorceries. Also in the book of Isaiah chapter 47 verse 9. It says this, both of these will overtake you in a moment, on a single day. Loss of children and widowhood, they will come upon you in the full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and all your potent spells. Not that witchcraft is not potent. In the month of, uh, month of October, is the month where we have uh, people celebrating Halloween. And I don't know the main origin of this celebration, but it's mainly in the West, in in the West, and now it has come into the continent of Africa that people now are doing uh, Halloween. Now the problem is, you may be wearing a costume just thinking you are celebrating Halloween. But in the realm of the spirit, those things exist real life. They are not just those scary creatures you see, they actually they exist. So the moment you are associating with them, you are giving them some room on the physical love. The physical, the physical space. Like now, all the, the, some, some of the streets in America, they are, they are changing. Even here in Kenya, they are changing. They say, hey, Halloween is coming. It's like a big holiday. But God is going to destroy your sorceries. He's going to destroy your, your potent spells. Listen, it says, I am against you, declares the Lord. I will lift up your skirts over your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I will pelt you with filth. I will treat you with contempt 
and make you a spectacle. All who see will flee from you and say, Nineveh is in ruins. Who will mourn for her? Where can I find anyone to comfort you? Are you better than Thebes situated on the Nile with water around her? The river was her defense. The waters her wall. Cush and Egypt were her boundless strength. Put and Libya were among her allies. Yet she was taken captive and she went into exile. Hallelujah. Her, her infants were dashed to pieces. At the head of every street, lots were cast for her nobles, and all her great men were put in chains. You too, Nineveh, will become drained, will become drunk, you will go into hiding and seek refuge from the enemy. All your fortresses are like fig trees with their fast ripe fruit. When they are shaken, the figs fall into the mouth of the eater. Look at your troops, they are all women. The gates of your land are wide open to your enemies. Fire has consumed their bars. Draw water for the siege. Strengthen your defenses. Work the clay. Tread the mortar. Repair the brickwork. There the fire will devour you. The sword will cut you down. And like grasshoppers consume you. Multiply like grasshoppers. Multiply like locusts. You have increased the number of your merchants till they are more than the stars of the sky. But like locusts, they will strip the land and then fly away. Your guards are like locusts. Your officials like swarms of locusts that settle in the walls on a cold day. But when the sun appears, they fly away and no one knows where. O king of Assyria, your shepherds slumber. Your nobles lie down to rest. Your people are scattered on the mountains with no one to gather them. Nothing can heal your wound. Hmm. Your injury is fatal. Everyone who hears the news about you claps his hands at your fall. Who, for who has not yet felt your endless cruelty? The people... That have their cruelties. The people that have their with uh, have with their cruelties been a terror and destruction to others, will eventually have terror and destruction brought home to them. They are but preparing themselves to you know terrible enemies against the day of their own fall. So every kind of situation where men and women have been working on a terror and destruction of others, eventually they will have terror and destruction brought home to them. Is that what you saw, you will exactly reap it, exactly as you do it. As you saw, you will reap. That is exactly how it is. The great lesson of, of, of Nahum is that the character of God makes him not only a stronghold to those who trust him, but one who will not all, not at all acquit the wicked, he can be just and yet the justifier of him which believes in Christ Jesus. But only because his law has been vindicated fully in the cross. The righteous will never be moved because he is just and yet a justifier of him who believes in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 3 verse 26. The word of the Lord says. To, to, to declare I say. At this time. His righteousness. That he might be just. And the justifier of him. Who believes in Jesus. I want you to pray over your life. Tell the Lord. Justify my life. In my area. In the area of reading the word. In the area of ministry. In the area of my finances. Justify my justifier. There's a singer who sang, my beautifier, taking away my shame. When he sang that song, I want you now to, um, to read and meditate on Romans 3.26. That says that, I declare, they say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, he's your justifier. 
We move on to the book of First Corinthians. Second Corinthians and chapter 1. Actually, we commence this amazing book. It is 13 days of Second Corinthians. And we thank God for he's a God of all comfort. We want to bless the name of the Lord for helping us. This fire has brought us. It is um, it's just he's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. We honor him. We magnify his name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians, second Corinthians now. Hallelujah! This is uh, first, uh, second, Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter 1 and starts with greeting. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with the saints throughout Asia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is your comfort, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because you know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we were despaired, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not only rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a bad, such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us on him. We have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. This is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you, in the holiness and sincerity that are from God, which have, which have done so not according to worldly wisdom, but according to God's grace. For we do not write to you, we do not write to you anything you cannot read or understand. And I hope that, as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I was confident of this, I planned to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I planned to visit you on my way to Macedonia and come back to you from Macedonia and then have you send me on my way to Judea. When I planned this, did I not, did I do it lightly? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For hallelujah, glory to God. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say yes, 
Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my heart I will obey and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way, I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey, when your spirit speaks to me, with my heart I will agree, and my answer will be yes. Lord, yes, I say yes, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey, when your spirit says to me, hallelujah, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey, when your spirit, hallelujah, Paul is teaching us, and speaking of in the mighty anointing of the Lord, hey, <laughs> oh my father, I worship you, Ah, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me yeah, with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes hey, I say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes hallelujah Paul speaking to the Corinthian church it says to them that the Lord Jesus Christ is a matter of yes in Christ, it's always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken to by us by the glory of God, to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you to stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us. And put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit. Guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness. That it was in order to spare you. That I did not return to Corinth. Not that we load it over your faith. But we work with you for your joy. Because it is by faith you stand firm. Beloved of God. As we come to this wonderful time. We have the book of Ephesians, Colossians, and Revelation that I'm going to leave to you to study on your own. But I want us to pray the righteous will never be moved. And particularly as we are singing this chorus, I'll say yes to your will and to your way. I want you to be able to tell the Lord my Father, I desire you. I long for you. It's you that I long for. It's you that I want. It's you that I need. That God will cause his presence to come alive in your life. And you will experience the supernatural. Because all his promises are yes. In fact, this is one place that gives me confidence to pray. Because... The promises of God are yes. Has he promised to set you free from sickness? Yes. Has he, set you, has he promised to set all the shackles off your feet and also set you free from every bondage? Yes. Has he planned to lift you financially 
by giving you more ideas and creativity to work your hands and to be able to you receive more income this is a yes as we call on his name together this night i want also to invite you who is not born again that salvation is the greatest gift that you can receive freely. It's for free. You receive it by faith, by believing in the Son of God. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I also want to invite you to partner with this work as we... Continue to do the will of the Lord, do more missions, and bless the Lord. Glory be to God. The details are in the video, so let's just worship God as we conclude. Spirit it says to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord. Yes. Now join me, let's sing it. I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way, I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. Hey! When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. The righteous will not be moved, they will not be moved, they will not be moved, you will not be moved. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I shall not be moved. We give glory to God even as we conclude. Father, we thank you for helping us throughout this uh, transmission today. May your blessing be on your people that the righteous shall not be moved. We thank you, Lord, for breathing on your word and for giving us even this eternal gospel. We thank you, Father, even as we conclude this broadcast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Brother Solomon. Don't miss Messianic Sunday. It's happening this Sunday, uh, Solomon. So, else <laughs> miss Okuje. Hallelujah. So, God bless, guys. And, uh, yeah, it's such a blessing. Please subscribe and watch out for the mission update. I will be doing it as the Lord helps me. Shalom.